Um, hello, fellas. Um, tough day. Anytime you drop a game, certainly that. Um, you had the potential of winning, but first and foremost, uh, um, I told our guys, you got to give credit to West Virginia. I didn't realize the lead was what it was because you're so involved in the game, but they fought back like um, well coached, good teams do. And so credit to them uh, first and foremost, but right after that, just so proud of our guys, the effort and fight. Um, I thought that we took a step forward with our execution. Um, tough place to play here. They had seen us play Tuesday. They hadn't played all week, so they threw some different things at us, but um, really, really proud to be associated with these guys. It has not been an easy week for the program um, emotionally, so um, I thought our mental was pretty good uh, for, for the 40 minutes, and again, came up short a little bit there at the end. Thanks, Jermaine. Okay, Jermaine Hill, uh, first question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, two strong starts in a row for your team. Shane talked about it last game, how you guys got things going in the locker room. Was it kind of mm -hmm. more of the same this game, um, hyping them up in the locker room, or how did that work? Well, you know, what happens is um, whenever you're down someone, we've been down coaches, but down players, you know, guys rally. I thought it, it, it's not been the first time. Not having Nigel against Marquette, you're able to see it, and then we – of course, have been without Marquise, um, you know, say uh, versus Texas. So guys were rallying. You know, the first time we saw it was at Wichita State. We didn't get the, the good start, but we certainly got the, the good road dub. So that was good for us. But um, it's something that we've been working on and, and trying to do everything from, you know, save our legs to shorten practice sessions, especially when we got low numbers. Um, but that's just a credit to the players, I think, making a decision. Uh, for, for a better start, uh, coming out a little bit more hyped, uh, it, you know, somebody might say, but um, I think it's just part of that growth process for us, and hopefully we can keep that going Wednesday versus TCU. And then, you know, against Texas, you guys lost it in the second half. You almost did it against West Virginia, but you really yep. did fight. So what was it mm -hmm. like to see that, and who do you credit that to? Well, I think it was collective, you know, certainly – when guys see guys come back, say like a Marquise, we were certainly down Mike today, and then they saw the impact he had on the game. I think it encouraged us uh, a bunch. But I would say it's collective. We're still searching for that leadership. Um, sometimes you have one team, uh, one guy on the team, and sometimes you have a, a, a group of a group of guys. So um, here we are in January, struggling a little bit on the wins and losses in the conference. But uh, we're very optimistic that if we keep plugging away, keep getting better, try to get ourselves healthy, and then stay healthy. Uh, if we could keep that energy for 40 minutes and then take ownership. Coach Weber has been preaching for the last few weeks, well, last since the beginning of the year, ownership of this team and collectively, um, you, know, you know, beating the one drum, just one sound with the group. Um, I think it can happen. So I, I think people rally about the guys who are coming back. Um, not just Marquise. I thought Davion gave us really good minutes. Um, we tried to monitor it a little bit, a couple at a time, but um, I, I'm just hopeful that when we do uh, reach apex as a team during the season, we're all healthy coming together because we're still trying to find ourselves a little bit with, with lineups and playing small. Do we play too big? So um, even in addition to Marquise and, and uh, Davion, it, it was good to see Carlton come back, but I think it's collective. And then last one I got for you, Coach, you know, the front court or the back court has been great all season long. The front court's mm -hmm. really been struggling. I mean, how much is it to, could be the success of this team if that front court does come along? Well, I mean, I think sky's the limit uh, if we can get those guys. Because I think when you take uh, Davion Bradford, uh, Casey, now Carlton, who's put some games together, even Logan when he comes back-ish when we move him to the five, I think collectively we, we, we have a variety of guys that, that should help us as we play different styles and different opponents in the conference. But it just begins and ends with everybody getting better. And again, taking that ownership of their own game and then their own role within the team. So um, Ish came on late. He made some, some big shots later. We still need him to crash the glass um, and then kind of take his time. Don't rush things on the floor. Um, but uh, I, I think it'll come. 
we're, we're hoping sooner than later, but we're certainly optimistic that it'll come. Thank you, Coach. I know it was in a loss. Yeah. I was really impressed with you on the sideline there today. So Thank you. Before, Thank before. you. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay, uh, next question to D. Scott. Christian? Yeah, hey, Jermaine. Um, good effort out there. ESPN made mention that you found out at 9.42 in the morning yesterday. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. How did you find out and what was your reaction? Well, you know, I've been, it's my 25th year of coaching. And I told guys this morning, the best part about it is I've had tremendous bosses. Uh, the late Charlie Coles at Miami, Gary Waters when I was at Cleveland State, um, Paul Luss, we spent some time together at Missouri State. And, and now my, my life has just been enriched by Coach Weber and his example every day. So when you're around those guys, you're hoping some of those things rub off. Uh, and you do what you have to do. You know, uh, when Coach called me at 942, I thought he was on his way to practice <laughs> because he was able to test out. And uh, so we just jumped right in. You know, we just at 942, Coach Weber says, well, here's my thoughts for practice. And, you know, you write them down and now you got to execute them. But. I hope it's been my experience to people I've been around. Certainly our staff is tremendous um, with, with Coach Lowry and then she, uh, Coach Southwell. Curtis Kelly is one of our GAs, our video coordinator, uh, Nate Michael, Drew Spiro, Mike Furlong, Bailey. I mean, everybody is, supports each other. So you, you, feel, you feel the energy from everybody. So it was a short notice, but uh, you know, we didn't know what, what the world was going to throw at us next. You know, it's been since Monday, it's been a whirlwind. And so try to do my part to get guys ready. And then uh, we go from there. These are obviously unprecedented times. You get an airplane and you see what you have to work with. Lesser mm -hmm. teams would really wilt, you know, and just totally bomb. How well, proud are you of your guys to fight? Tell you what, I've been in certainly here in the Elite Eight game uh, when we beat Kentucky in 99. I was part of a special group at Miami, Ohio. Um, we watched a video of me uh, jumping around in 07. I don't encourage you to Google it, Mac Tournament 2007, but we had a banker to go to the NCAA when I was at Miami, Ohio. But it, I would be hard-pressed to find a memory more pleasant and in a time I was more proud of a guys than today. Because we did. I mean, again, Davion coming back. Carlton hadn't played hardly. We have not been able to practice, not to mention our leader has been out. And um, he's been talking to him, FaceTime, Zooms. But there's nothing like being there. So extremely proud of, of the effort. And, and there's no moral victories. And, and K-State has got a proud tradition of, of winning and of excellence. And I think if we stay the course, we can certainly get there. Uh, but we got to continue to bond and grow and mature. Uh, make those plays, but uh, having been to Oklahoma and also West Virginia in the first, you know, two of the first three games in conferences is, is a heck of a thing. So uh, those would be tough games to win no matter what. But I think moving forward with our effort, um, I thought I, I was pleased with our execution for most part of the game. Uh, we had a law there in the second half where the crowd got involved, but but extremely proud. Given the character of this team that you've been able to see the last couple of games, how would that benefit you guys moving forward? Oh, I think it's going to be huge. I think other than us taking more ownership of our own actions and everything, I think this is this is a big deal. Um, it's a huge step. Again, we were talking about it, and I think Casey Scott said we hadn't been here this early in a long time. You know, you normally dread that long uh, flight and everything, and then Coach Huggins' teams are always so tough and hard to beat at home, but um, it's done and over with. We got to move forward, but um, again, you know, the guys fall, and that's what we try to do. And again, if we can get healthy, get collective, get some practice sessions under our belt, add all the pieces that we've been missing, I think we have a chance at a heck of a year. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, qu uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Jermaine. Um, the second half of the last two games obviously haven't gone your way. I'm just wondering if you and Shane by yourself have to do all the coaching work, how much have you missed having those other voices there to help make adjustments during those times? Well, I don't care. Even that pregame meal, you miss those voices because, again, there's a lot of knowledge on both sides of the ball when you talk Coach Weber on down with the rest of the staff. So adjustments are the biggest thing, you know, because like we say in this game, you know, Kellis, 
12 eyes are always better than four or two or six. And so you do miss that for adjustments because um, I think that's the beauty of our staff is we kind of will see things different and do a good job of trying to help each other. Certainly if it's a scout or someone's leading the charge on game day. So you miss it, but I, I think we could have overcome it in both games. Um, we kind of are, are allowing our offense to affect our defense in the second half because when you're in a great league and guys catch up to you and they make adjustments, we have to now make those adjustments. And so um, we got to make stands, get stops on defense, even if we're not scoring on offense. And um, that happened today. I think we gave up a huge three uh, to Taz Sherman in transition. We had our hands down on McNeil a couple of times. Now they threw a couple up there off the glass um, uh, during their run. But but we can make stands on defense, and we, we just got to get to the point where the offense doesn't affect our defense. All right. Thanks, Jermaine. Travel safe. Hey, thank you, Kellis. Uh, next question to Ryan Black. Hey, Jermaine, if I, if I tell you before the game, you guys are going to hold Taz Sherman seven points under his kind of league leading average. I mean, does that make you think you like your chances today? Well, I probably would have stayed at the hotel. You know what I mean? I probably would have never came to the game if we were going to hold him that low. <laughs> yeah. Taz Sherman is a heck of a player, man. Leading scorer in the, in the conference. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, it's a credit to the guys, you know, understand the scout report. Uh, we wanted to make it tough. We didn't do the flip side of that, and that's making it tough for McNeil. He's a heck of a player, but I thought a few times we let our guard down and he was able to get some open looks, so we can't have that. But um, certainly proud of the effort uh, in regard to guard and Taz. And so we know when he comes to our place, he'll be fired up. And you don't know the difficulties of him coming back. Uh, I think he was out last week at Texas, so he's probably going through some growing pains getting back in the lineup getting his wind and things back, but certainly a phenomenal player, one of the better players, not only in the league, but in the country, and uh, really proud of our guys for their effort versus him today. And then kind of a follow-up to that, you know, McNeil kind of struggled in the first half, but he was he was really good in the second half, made seven out of his ten shots. I mean, what did, was there anything you guys could have gone, done differently, or was he just playing really well offensively? Well, I think it was a combination of both. He was playing really well, but I thought he got some opportunistic baskets. You know what I mean, Ryan? Like, I think – he was, okay, hands are down. He made a deep three. Uh, we didn't find him, and he made a shot. Uh, credit to him for staying the course. Uh, we had a lot of momentum. We are making a lot of shots in the first half. You just knew they would make a run. Um, but for the most part, I thought we shut the other guys out, did a good job on Sherman. Uh, but McNeil certainly turned it on, and um, something for us to really lock in on next time. Um he doesn't really force balls, but but again, he got opportunistic baskets where our hands are down. We don't find him in transition, and we don't understand his quick trigger, and he was able to get going. And then, Jermaine, last thing for me, uh, you know, this being Marquise's first Big 12 game, how did you feel like he played with 10 points, 10 assists, but also having, you know, the six turnovers? Oh, he's a little pet boy, and he's fiery. Um, I kept trying to get his attention to time to settle down. Uh, I had no intention of playing him over 30 minutes today, but we needed him. Um, a few times we tried to get out of there, but he told me at halftime, hey, don't worry about it, coach. You know, I'm fine. Now, he did. He did a great job of getting himself back with returning to play this week on his own shooting and running. So I thought it was fine, but I think he can kind of see uh, sometimes when guys can't stay in front of you, what they'll do is they'll stand in front of you. You know what I mean? And now he got a couple of those charges. Uh, we wish we had some of those plays back, but I think he's going to have no problem competing in the Big 12. He's got a lot of fight. He's a tough, tough competitor. Uh, we'll need him to be a little bit more wiser on some of the drives, but we'll get those things corrected. But but I thought for his first uh, Big 12 game to get a double-double in Morgantown was was really, really good. Hey, thanks, Jermaine. Safe travels back here to Manhattan. Hey, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you, buddy. Any other questions for Jermaine before we jump off? Going once, going twice. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank hey, you, thanks, everyone. Appreciate you guys.